What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. So let's get into it. In this video, we will be talking about common types of input output device interfaces. Understanding these interfaces is crucial and they are essential for connecting, configuring, and troubleshooting computing devices. So we're going to break it down into four sections. We're going to talk about networking interfaces, both wired and wireless, networking devices and tools, peripheral device interfaces, and display ports and display technologies. All right, first, let's talk about networking interfaces, which are crucial for connecting devices to a network, either through a wired or wireless connection. And we'll look at both categories, starting with wired interfaces. So let's talk about the Ethernet connector RJ45. So one of the most common networking connectors is the RJ45 connector. And RJ45 connectors are used with Ethernet cables to connect devices like computers, routers, and switches to wired networks. And the connectors are typically use with CAT5E, CAT6, and CAT6A cables, which provide varying levels of data transfer speed from 100 megabits per second up to 10 gigabits per second. And it is a standard and reliable method for achieving high speed, low latency connections over short to medium distances. Another wired interface is the small form factor pluggable or the SFP connector commonly found in fiber optic networking. SFPs are hot swappable interfaces that allow network devices like switches to connect to fiber optic or copper cables, providing faster speeds and greater distances than traditional Ethernet. And fiber optic cables use light to transmit data, making them ideal for long distance communications or environments where electromagnetic interference is an issue and SFP modules come in various types such as the SFP plus for 10 gigabit per second connections offering versatility in how you configure and connect your network infrastructure. Now let's look at the wireless networking interfaces which provide flexibility and mobility compared to wired options. And the first one is Bluetooth. So this is a short range wireless technology used for connecting devices like smartphones, wireless keyboards, mice, and speakers. It has a range of approximately 30 feet and is ideal for low power, low bandwidth connections. And Bluetooth is widely used for peripherals and IoT devices offering quick pairing and data exchange. Next, we have what is called near field communication. So NFC is another short range wireless technology that operates at distances of a few centimeters. And it's used for applications like contactless payments, access control, and data transfer between devices by simply tapping them together. NFC is secure and efficient, making it great for scenarios where close proximity communication is required. All right, next we have what is called 802.11x, also known as Wi-Fi. So 802.11x, this is a family of Wi-Fi standards that provides high-speed wireless networking. And the most common versions are 802.11n, 802.11ac, and 802.11ax, which is also known as Wi-Fi 6. And these versions support speeds ranging from a few hundred megabits per second to over nine gigabits per second, and have a varying range from indoors, such as around 100 to 500 feet to outdoors, which can extend it up to 300 feet. And Wi-Fi, this is the most prevalent wireless networking technology for home and business use, supporting a wide range of devices and high data transfer speeds. All right, so networking interfaces are just one part of the puzzle. So let's discuss the networking devices and tools used to work with these connections. So the first one we have is a crimper. So a crimper is a tool used to attach connectors such as RJ45 plugs to the ends of network cables. And proper crimping ensures a solid electrical connection between the cable and connector, which is essential for reliable data transfer. Then we have what is called a cable test. So a cable tester is used to verify the integrity and continuity of network cables. It helps identify issues like short circuits, cable breaks, or miswiring. By using a cable tester, you can quickly troubleshoot and ensure that cables are correctly terminated and functioning properly. So these tools are important for setting up and maintaining network connections and ensuring that they work as intended. 
All right, now let's move on to the peripheral device interfaces. So these interfaces connect external devices to computers, allowing data transfer and additional functionalities. And the first one we have is the USB, which stands for Universal Serial Bus. So USB, this is a standard for connecting a wide variety of peripherals to a computer. We have what is called USB-A. This is the most recognizable rectangular USB connector, and it is widely used for connecting devices like flash drives keyboards and mice you have the USB B and this is often found on printers and external hard drives and it has a more square shape and then we have the USB C and this is a newer standard that is reversible and supports faster data transfer speeds higher power delivery it can also be used for video output and USB C is quickly becoming the go-to connector for modern devices due to its versatility Next, we have what is called the Thunderbolt. So Thunderbolt interfaces are high-speed connections that combine data transfer, display output, and power delivery through a single cable. In Thunderbolt 3 and 4, they use the USB-C connector, supporting speeds up to 40 gigabits per second and allowing users to connect multiple devices like displays, external drives, and docking stations. Next, we have Bluetooth and radio frequency. So as previously mentioned, Bluetooth is also used as a peripheral interface for wireless devices like keyboards, mice, and headphones. Then we have radio frequency interfaces that are often used for wireless peripherals, particularly older wireless keyboards and mice that use a USB dongle to communicate. Next, we have the Lightning Connector. So the Lightning Connector, this is a proprietary standard used by Apple devices like iPhones and iPads. And the Lightning Connector, it provides data transfer, charging, and connectivity to other devices and peripherals. So these interfaces, they enable the connection and use of a wide range of external devices, offering flexibility and expanding a computer's capabilities. All right, now let's discuss display ports and interfaces that are specifically designed for connecting video output devices like monitors, projectors, and TVs. So the first one we have is the Video Graphics Array, or VGA, and that is the blue connector on your screen right here. So VGA, this is an analog video connector that has been around for a long time. And once again, it is recognizable by its blue color and 15 pin connector. Although it's becoming outdated, VGA is still found on many older monitors and projectors. And then we have what is called DVI or Digital Visual Interface. So DVI is a step up from VGA offering a digital video signal for higher quality. And DVI comes in several types, including DVI-D, which produces a digital signal only. DVI-A produces an analog signal only. And DVI-I, this is integrated for both analog and digital. Now, DVI supports HD video, but newer interfaces have largely replaced it. All right, next we have High Definition Multimedia Interface, or most commonly known as HDMI. So HDMI is one of the most common video connectors found on modern devices. It supports high definition video and audio over a single cable, and it is the standard for TVs, monitors, and gaming consoles. HDMI versions range from 1.4 to 2.1, offering resolutions up to 4K and beyond. Then we have DisplayPort, and this is similar to HDMI, but it is designed to be more versatile and is commonly used in computer monitors. It supports high resolutions, high refresh rates, and multiple monitor setups. And display ports also support audio and USB data transfer, making it a powerful connector for modern displays. Then we have USB-C. And this is becoming a standard connector for video output as well, especially with technologies like Thunderbolt and DisplayPort alternate mode. And it provides high resolution video, data transfer, and power delivery all through a single cable. So these display interfaces are crucial for connecting computers to monitors and other displays, providing options for both digital and analog connections. All right, finally, let's cover display technology methods, specifically mirroring and casting. Mirroring is when the content of a device's screen, like a laptop or smartphone, is duplicated on an external display. 
And this is common for presentations or scenarios where you might want multiple viewers to see the same content. And connections for mirroring include HDMI cables, DisplayPort, or wireless methods like Apple AirPlay or Google Cast. And then we have what is called casting. So casting differs from mirroring in that it allows you to stream content directly to an external device without duplicating the screen exactly. So for example, when you cast the video to a smart TV, the video plays on the TV, but you can not continue using your phone for other tasks. So casting is often done wirelessly using protocols like Google Cast, Miracast, or DLNA. So mirroring and casting, they provide flexibility in how content is shared and displayed, supporting both wired and wireless scenarios. All right, and to summarize, we've covered a variety of input output interfaces. We've talked about networking interfaces like RJ45, SFP, Bluetooth, NFC, and Wi Fi. We talked about networking tools like crimpers and cable testers. We talked about peripheral connections, including USB, Thunderbolt, Bluetooth, RF, and Lightning. We talked about display ports like VGA, DVI, HDMI, display port, and USB C. And we talked about display technologies for mirroring and casting. Content. Now, each of these plays a vital role in how devices connect, communicate, and function, making it important to understand them for the CompTIA Tech Plus exam and for practical applications in IT. All right. Now, with all of that being said, let's get into this check on learning. So which of the following connectors is most likely used for wired Ethernet networking? Would it be a USB-C, an HDMI, an RJ45, or SFP? And the correct answer would be RJ45. RJ stands for registered jack, but it'd be RJ45. And this is the standard connector used for wired Ethernet networking. It is commonly found in LAN environments for connecting computers and other devices to a network. USB-C and HDMI are used for data transfer and display connections, respectively, while SFP is used for connecting fiber optic networks. All right, next question. Which wireless networking standard is commonly used for short range communication between devices, such as connecting a wireless headset to a smartphone? Would it be NFC? Would it be 802.11X? Would it be Bluetooth? Or would it be SFP? All right. And the correct answer would be Bluetooth. So Bluetooth, this is a wireless standard used for short range communication, typically within 10 meters. It is ideal for connecting peripherals like headsets, mice and keyboards to other devices. NFC or near field communication. This is used for very short range data transfers. And 802.11x, this refers to Wi-Fi networking standards. SFP, this is related to fiber optic connections and not wireless communication. All right. And finally, which of the following is the best tool to test functionality of an Ethernet cable to ensure it is wired correctly? Would it be a crimper, a cable tester, a multimeter or a Bluetooth scanner? And the correct answer would be a cable tester. So a cable tester is used to check the integrity and proper wiring of Ethernet cables. It identifies any issues like miswirings or breaks in the cable. A crimper is used for attaching connectors to a cable, while a multimeter is a general purpose electrical tool and not specifically for networking cables. And a Bluetooth scanner is unrelated to Ethernet cables at all.